and I ask her, what thing? She says, remember the thing on the thing, you know. And I don't know. I hate this language. You have to be specific. But this is not the worst language crime. I also hate unnecessary words. The other day someone told me I had an unexpected surprise. I was like, really? Unexpected surprise? Do we have expected surprises? And then someone else told me, I like your shirt, it's red in color. I thought, wow, red in color? Could it be red in uh, taste somehow or something else? This is redundant language. Let's make a quick test. I say a sentence. If there's anything redundant or unnecessary, I want you to clap. Let me tell you about my past experience. Past experience, is there future experience, guys? Right, have you ever heard of future experience? You should clap, by the way. <laughs> All right, I read a nice book. Very good, very good. It's okay, no problem. I had a problematic problem. Actually, you're all wrong. <laughs> this statement, especially for me, is not redundant. Because in my life and in my experience, I found that problems are not necessarily problematic. I found that problems can be good because problems pushed me to grow, pushed me to be more than who I am today. Let me tell you an example of one problem. I studied pharmacy. It was absolutely terrible. I'm not a man of science. I know one thing. If you take Panadol, you will cure your headache. <laughs> Anything else? No, thank you. One day, I walked into the laboratory. My professor told me, be careful. If you smell any of the fumes from this experiment, you will not be able to have babies. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm getting an F and not having babies? <laughs> This is too much. After seven years of continuous torture, I came to realize that this problem actually contributed to my passion for education. Now, as a teacher, an English teacher, when I look at students in my classroom, I know how it feels when you don't belong. And I know how it feels to not know what you want in life. What am I good at? What do I love? What should I do? I have no idea. How many people feel like this? I felt the same way. I was in your shoes. And being there and coming out of this problem and living today, I could relate with you because of this problem. Another problem, and who doesn't have these problems? I broke up with my girlfriend a few years ago. Do you have tissues? <laughs> Because of this experience, I suffered a lot, but my suffering made me write poetry. I wanted to express my pain, so I found refuge in metaphors, similes, and all these nice figures of speech. In the end, this breakup made me better with language. So the question is, do you have problematic problems, or do you have good problems? What do you think? Yes. Problems are problems. Problems are problems. You're very negative. Yeah. I don't want to be <laughs> Yes. I think all the problems are problematic. What you are talking about, my problems, it's a challenge. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a different category. So perhaps we should delete yeah. the word from our uh, vocabulary. What do you think? Yes, Henning. Yeah, I believe that uh, the way uh, you look uh, to the problem is very important. Mm -hmm. Whether you look positive, then you can move forward and enhance, find uh, how you can overcome the problem. It's very important. Good. You're more positive than him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So don't you think that the problem, the problem really, is that people see a problem as a negative concept? Yes. And now we have to rewire yeah. our perspective. Instead of saying, I can't do X, say, I am presently struggling with X. That's what my favorite trainer used to say when I couldn't do one pull-up. I told him I can't do pull-ups. He said, no, you are presently struggling with pull-ups. Eventually I did one, one became two, two became three. 
That's it. <laughs> the, fat, the fat is gone. <laughs> so Toastmasters has been solving problems, good problems, changing problematic problems to challenges, as this gentleman said, for over a hundred years. There are 16,000 clubs worldwide, over 350,000 members, and it's present in over 143 countries. In a country like Australia, they have 1,000 clubs. Guess how many we have in Egypt? One. Two. One in Cairo, one in Alexandria. I need more tissues. <laughs> but it's good to have you here. You are with us in the beginning. Eventually, we will have more clubs, more people, and we will overcome our non-problematic problems of speaking, shyness, organizing our speech, learning how to deliver, and achieving our goals. Before we start, I would like